Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss this example. Okay, so we are going to prove that R is uncountable. Countable means what? We can count them. Okay, infinite and countable cell, these are two different concepts. Okay, countable means we can count them first number, second number, third number, fourth number in this way. That means we can give proper numbering to them x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 and so on. Then we say the set is countable. Here we have to prove that R is uncountable. Okay. So see, I am drawing this R here, right? So this is a real line we have. We have to prove that it is uncountable. Let me mention to prove that R is un uncountable. Okay. See, you know that in R, we have 0 at the middle, right? And uh, see, 1, 2, 3, 4. So see, here I'm considering 1, there you will have 2, 3, 4 like that. So it is enough to prove the close interval 0, 1 is uncountable. Getting? If the proper subset of any big set is uncountable, obviously the larger set is also uncountable. So let me mention, it is enough to prove it is enough to prove that close interval 0, 1 is uncountable. See, this is a proper subset of R and it, if it is uncountable, obviously R is also uncountable. But see, in mathematics, we have one common technique, okay? So when we want to prove something, we assume exactly opposite to that. So here also I will do the same. I will assume that it is countable. Let if possible, this close interval 0, 1 is countable. Okay. Countable means what we can count its elements. First element, second element, third element, fourth element like that. That means we can give a proper numbering to them, x1, x2, x3 and so on. So therefore, it is countable. So therefore, we can write in this way, x1, x2, x3, x4 and so on. Okay, so obviously it has infinitely many elements. But see, we are saying it is countable. So that's why we can express in this way also. After that, what will I do? I will going to construct a sequence of intervals, okay, like this. Let I1 be a close interval such that such that I1 is subset of close interval 0, 1. Okay. So I am going to take the uh, close interval which is subset of this close interval 0, 1. Okay. And x1 does not belong to this I1. Suppose our element x1 is somewhere here. Suppose this is my x1. So I will consider this is interval i1. This is interval i1, okay, which is a close interval, which is subset of close interval 0, 1, okay, and x1 does not belong to i1. In the same way, I am going to define my i2. Let i2 be a close interval okay let me write here such that such that i2 is proper subset of i1 and x2 does not belongs to i2 okay so suppose x2 is here suppose x2 is here then my i2 will be like this so this is my i2 Getting this is my I2. In the same way, I will define I3 also. I hope you have understood how I am defining all this. So let I3 be a close interval such that. Okay, so just guess what I am going to write. Yes, I3 subset of i2 and x3 does not belong to i3. Okay, so suppose x3 is somewhere here. So our i3 will be like this getting and in this way I will continue this process 
and so in general let me write in general in general i3 i n sorry i should write i n b a close interval such that such that i n is subset of the previous set i n minus 1 and x n does not belongs to i n and so on and so on so i will repeat this process infinitely many times so that means i will get a sequence of intervals i n right but see all these are subsets of closed interval 0 1 okay so clearly clearly i n subset of closed interval 0 1 and closed interval 0 1 is bounded obviously it is bounded no bounded above by 1 bounded below by 0 so it's a bounded set and all sets i n are subsets of closed interval 0 1 so therefore i n's are also bounded these are closed also we have already mentioned i2 close i1 close i n close therefore i n or let me mention each i n each i n is close and bounded such that such that you can easily see such that i1 contains i2 i2 contains i3 i3 contains i4 and so on that means this is a decreasing sequence of uh, intervals get it so i'm going to write that thing just to make a screenshot of it first such that let me com complete this statement i1 contains i2 contains i3 contains i4 and so on okay so this is a decreasing se sequence of intervals so it is closed it is bounded all sets are non-empty it's a decreasing sequence of intervals so we can apply nested interval theorem so that theorem says intersection is non-empty let me mention therefore by nested interval theorem see we have already completed this theorem in our previous video okay so in by nested interval theorem intersection i n n belongs to set of natural number is not equal to phi the intersection is non-empty that means definitely we can find some elements from the intersection let c belongs to i am taking one point from the intersection n belongs to set of natural number okay so c will be somewhere here which lies in a intersection of all these intervals right c belongs to uh, c therefore let me mention therefore c belongs to the intersection n belongs to set of natural number and see the intersection is subset of closed interval 0 1 it means c belongs to closed interval 0 1 right so c is the element of this closed interval 0 1 in diagram also you can easily see but see initially we have already stated that closed interval 0 1 is a countable we can count them and already we have given names to them x1 x2 x3 x4 x100 x1000 like that we have already shown that thing so c is the element of that that means c is also one of them so c will be something xm like that okay so therefore c is equal to xm for some m so it is possible because we have already stated it is counted countable getting and we have already given names to them x1 x2 like this so it is one of them so x will be sorry c will be something xm okay for some uh, natural number m yes so therefore therefore c is equal to xm i am writing the same thing but c belongs to intersection i n n belongs to set of natural number okay so let me remove this part so we will have some more space to write see here we have got that xm lies in intersection that means xm belongs to i n for all natural numbers okay therefore xm belongs to i n that means xm belongs to i m also by i m also but see but xm does not belongs to i m by definition of i m getting by definition of i m 
see uh, you remember how we define that thing uh, in the definition we have already mentioned x1 does not belongs to i1 x2 does not belongs to i2 x3 does not belongs to i3 in definition we have already mentioned so that's why obviously xm should not be in i m but what we are getting we are getting x m belongs to i m that means we are getting a contradiction so what is the reason of getting contradiction because our assumption is wrong that closed interval 0 1 is countable that is wrong so that's why it is uncountable so let me clearly mention so therefore we get a contradiction okay so why we are getting contradiction Therefore, our assumption is wrong, assumption is wrong. Our assumption was that closed interval 0, 1 is countable, which is wrong. Therefore, 0, 1 is uncountable. It is uncountable. See, but that closed interval 0, 1 is subset of R. Okay, it's a subset, proper subset of R. It is uncountable. So, therefore, the larger set R is also r is uncountable okay so in this way we proved that uh, r set of real numbers is uncountable the proof is over make a screenshot of it we will meet in next video thank you